For any of you who do not know me, I am a Findom and I make 30K a month. A Findom is someone who literally works with men who have submissive sides on the internet and they will send me money just because it pleases them. Sometimes I don't even see their face. I never meet them in person and I've made half a million dollars now, mostly because I would have been making more had I taken it seriously earlier. It was mostly a part-time gig, but I'm on Zoom teaching every, everything I know and I'm selling it for now. The price did go up because it's like, I realized, holy shit, like this is that. This is some shit, okay? So it is $89 now for the next four days. And then I'm honestly thinking like I might even increase it even more once I stop doing the live Zooms. But I just wanna get as many girls in as possible right now, you know? I wanna influence you to get the fuck in, get your spot, okay? This could change your life. This will change your life if you put the fucking work in. All right, so let me know. Comment if you want to be added to this Zoom. Next four days, baby. Maybe we'll do five days. We'll do it till fucking February since February 14th since Valentine's Day. And I love you guys, you fucking cuties. I love you guys. So let me know. Okay, bye. The women are out here getting to the bag. But that bag, it comes with a price. What's going on, everyone? This is Star. Welcome to the channel. I'm your weekend YouTuber. And since Justin Bieber has yet to tell his story and Diddy has yet to be arrested, we talking about pay pigs today. Pay pigs is a popular topic on TikTok. But what these women need to understand is nothing in life is free. Absolutely nothing. If a man is giving you 10, 15, 20,000 a month, he's expecting something. Story time. I was working at this company and one day my car didn't start. So my coworker, he said, oh, I can take you home. No problem. So he took me home, which was about, hmm, how many minutes was that? 35 minutes away. So when I got home, I reached into my purse to give him some money. And he said, no, you don't need to give me money. I thought to myself, he is so sweet. And then the weekend rolls around and he pops up at my house unannounced. But not only that, he comes with jewelry in hand. Real nice jewelry, by the way. He then proceeds to say that we need to take things to the next level. And I kept it real with him. I told him I didn't believe in dating co-workers because if it goes sour, the last thing I'm going to want to see is his face. I know it's a lot of you out there that are sleeping with your co-workers, having relationships, getting married to your co-workers, but I don't believe in that. I witnessed a couple on the job getting fired because they brought their problems to work. You cannot mix business with pleasure. It's just not smart. Anyways, let me get back to the story. When I told the guy I didn't believe in dating co-workers, he said, okay, we'll just keep the jury. I refused to keep the jury because I knew it came with a price. If I would have kept that jury, he would have been sitting outside my house spying. I've had that happen to me before. And I'm sure some of you have as well. Do you guys remember that Instagram model that was killed by a guy that was giving her thousands a month? Remember that? And he got angry because she wasn't giving him a commitment because he felt he was owed that since he gave her all that money? You have to be careful out here. Let's talk about what happened to this Instagram model. This is 33-year-old Mercedes Moore. She was a video vixen, fashion nova model, and she had 2.5 million followers on Instagram. She was followed by a lot of celebrities like Drake, Cardi B, Tory Lanez, Megan Thee Stallion, and many more. Was well known in the music industry. Mercedes was known to be a fun, happy, bubbly person, known to be the life of the party, always joking around, and having a good time. Mercedes lived in Richmond, Texas. On August 29, 2021, Mercedes' father became worried when a few of her friends reached out to him saying she had to post it on Instagram in a few days and they haven't heard from her. He hadn't answered any of their calls or texts and this was very unlikely of Mercedes, given that social media was her source of income. So her father and his girlfriend drove over to her apartment. Once they arrived, they see that her car had still been in the driveway. She wasn't answering the door or answering her father's calls, so he immediately knew something was wrong. Her father then kicked the door down and found Mercedes lying at the bottom of the stairs curled up in a ball, half naked and unconscious. Her father's girlfriend went upstairs to grab something to cover up Mercedes with, and she found this man, 34-year-old Kevin Alexander Okordo, with a knife in his chest. He was still breathing, but later passed when cops arrived. Now, it was said that the two did not know each other personally. His blood was all over her apartment. There was even writing on the walls with Mercedes lipstick saying, She used me for my money. She made me believe that she loved me. Cops believed that he was a stalker of hers. Now, there was no forced entry. 
So cops and the apartment security have no clue on how he found her location or how he even entered her apartment. Her cause of death was strangulation and traumatic concussion. Now she will never get justice because he took his life after he took hers. May she rest in peace. Ladies, you have to be careful, especially if you're an Instagram model and you got all these male followers and they're stalking you and trying to find out where you live. They're begging to give you money so they can get next to you so they can find out where you live so they can unalive you. Just because a man has money, that doesn't mean he's saying he can have a whole lot of millions and be out of his damn mind. You got to really sit down and talk to people and find out where their head is at. So you can save your own life. All right, so let's move on to the NFL draft. A lot of black women had a problem with it, but why? It's the same thing year after year. Y'all haven't got used to that yet? Go ahead and roll the clip. Thank you. Why are all these black college athletes that are getting drafted having white women? What's going on? I am going to tell you. As someone that is friends with a lot of D1 football players and D1 basketball players, I'm going to tell you because they have told me. Whoa, 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 before I get into this, I want to make it clear I'm only into black women. I'm just telling you what they have told me. My man said, bro, how many white women have you seen do the Mega Stallion Challenge? And he said, excluding the ones that think they're two shades away from being Lotto. I said, probably only one. He said, okay. Y'all, five of my guys that play on Division One Power Five football teams and they start, they were like, goody, you know the type of NIL deals we got. One of my men said, bro, I was messing with this black girl. She heard about the deal I got and started to request money Apple Pays and Cash Apps for her hair and nails. I said, oh shit. My other friends were saying, bro, I would try to take her out to Chipotle, Cava, this and this and that. She would get mad talking about why are we going to steakhouses? You're good for it. I said, oh shit. They were like, bro, the white women, they're down to go and get a cup of coffee, go, go and get some fucking ice cream. My friends were like, bro, the white women we're dating, they pay for a lot of our stuff. I said, what do you mean? They said, bro, they know that we're making some money, but while we're at practice or we're at camp, they got us our favorite Cava bowl, double chicken, right? Waiting for them to come out of practice. My friends are telling me these girls are getting their group projects done, getting their essays done, online tests done, on time. I said, wait, what? I said, bro, what about maintenance? There's no way y'all not pay for her hair, nails, bags, her lifestyle. He said, bro, first of all, my girl will get her own Starbucks and even get me one. But if I want to be nice, I'll get her something, you know, from Starbucks. And they were like, hair and nails? They don't even care about the nails, really, you know? And if they do it, they do it themselves. Sometimes, I, you know, I pitch in and I was like, all oh, right, what about hair? They're like, bro, she's white. She just brushes it. We're flat on it. She wants to be special. So Jesus Christ, you guys are saving a lot of money. <laughs> one of my men said this. He just got drafted. He said, bro, I was dating a black girl. Now I'm dating a white girl. I'm about to marry her. He said, the difference between the black girl and the white girl, the biggest difference is the white girl knows when to shut the fuck up. I said, God damn. <laughs> Listen, this is what they told me. Do with the information as you please. If it takes me 10 to 15 years to find a black woman that's compatible with me, that's what I'm going to do. But this is what they told me. So stop being surprised. He said the white girls are paying for dates. Wouldn't you if you had mommy and daddy's credit card? White parents are known for starting their kids off early with good credit. They're known for doing that. So the white girl doesn't have to beg to get her hair and her nails done because daddy got that covered already. Are you with me, class? And the guy in the clip was right. White women will do anything to get the guy. Plain and simple, they believe in playing the long game. When I was in school, my white roommate was dating a star athlete. She would write his papers in the evening. She would wash his clothes in the middle of the night. If she needed to skip class to take him to the mall, she was going to skip class and take him to the mall. It was nothing she wouldn't do. White women love to compete for men, and they will pull your hair out, and they don't care if you're black or you're white. And black women, stop falling for the fairy tale that you hear about these interracial couples. They have problems like everybody else. Just last week, I talked about Jeannie Mai and Jeezy. They created a whole fairy tale for us to believe, and it was all bullshit. Now she's trying to get that man in jail. She's showing him walking around the house with assault rifles. She got the pictures of all the bruises on her body. It's a wrap for Jeezy. And he actually thought he could beat her in the courtroom. Jenny Mai was never a submissive woman. For the last 20 years, she's been on TV being an independent woman. She was never going to be a submissive woman, ever. Now, good luck to them. And next, we're going to talk about B. Taylor and Princella. Because I saw this one woman's video, and I think it was like seven hours long. Seven hours. God damn. 
But I must say her video was entertaining and she gave a lot of details and she played a lot of clips. Well, I guess so in seven hours. But I must say B. Taylor owned up to her mistake. She said, listen, I fucked up. I paid more attention to her business than mine. She explained how Princella used her connections for media and how she took her to a gala. So why didn't Princella help B. Taylor with her subscriber account? Because that would have been an even exchange, right? Because you're supposed to help each other while you're in a relationship. It reminds me of Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon said if he's sleeping with a woman and she's not using him for his connections to Hollywood, then she's a foolish woman. And that was the words from Nick Cannon. He said, use him up if you're with him. And powerful people are like that. They want you to use them. They want you to use their resources. And if you don't, they're going to dog your ass out for not being smart enough to take advantage. Imagine if Princella would have ran B. Taylor's numbers up to 100,000 by accident. Do you know how mad she would be right now? She probably would demand her subscribers to unsubscribe from her. And B. Taylor would be somewhere laughing her ass off right now. But instead, Princella is calling B. Taylor a pump and dump. That's crazy. So because B. Taylor didn't demand that Princella help her with her YouTube channel, she was nothing but a little slut now? Listen... Listen, like I said earlier, don't sleep with your co-workers. If you're a YouTuber and you got all these other YouTubers, y'all are co-workers. Never mix business with pleasure because it will end sour. And due to the breakup, it's a lot of secrets coming out. We should know about holes in the mattress, pee on the mattress, the little girl not going to school. That's crazy. And a lot of people are coming against uh, B. Taylor for that. And they're saying, hey, why didn't you call CPS? Only she can answer that question. Nobody else can answer that question for her. Now, Princella, she did a response video. I just knew she was going to dissect B. Taylor's video piece by piece. But instead, she brought on three ladies. And I believe she did that to gloss over the real shit. And what's the real shit? Her baby girl not feeling love. And let me tell you something. When B. Taylor talked about how the little girl told her that her mother didn't like her, that broke my heart and I don't even have any kids. Now, if it's true that the little girl said that, Princella, you got to get her therapy immediately before she hit teenage age and she start having babies early. You don't want a little girl out here feeling like nobody loves her, not even her mother. Now, Princella criticized B. Taylor for lacking drive and motivation, which means, B. Taylor, you should have used her up for her followers. You should have used her up to get to the next level. See what happens when you don't use people to your advantage? When you're around somebody with power, make sure you use them. Make sure you gain something out of that situation. You don't want to leave a relationship and all you gain was a wet ass. No. That's not enough. Get something out of it. You deserve more. So again, if you're dating someone of power, is it your duty to take advantage of their connections, their resources, or do you just sit back and get pleasure? I guess the choice is yours. I'm Star. Thank you so much for coming to the channel. Good night.